Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn about molecular shapes. This is part of the Edexcel syllabus for the International Advanced Level of Chemistry. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to determine the shapes of different molecules. Why is it that some molecules have a triangular shape while others have tetrahedral shape? In addition, we're going to learn about many other shapes of molecules. To start, we're going to ask this question. What determines the shape of a molecule? Why is it that water is drawn in a bent shape? Why is it very wrong to draw water in a linear shape? There are two factors that determine the shape of every molecule. The first is the angle between the bonds, between the covalent bonds. So what I have here is a methane molecule. So that's a carbon, and those are like the four hydrogens around the carbon. And what makes this methane molecule have that unique tetrahedral shape is the angle between the adjacent covalent bonds and the distance between the adjacent atoms, like the distance between the carbon and the hydrogen. You have to think of covalent bonds as areas that are rich with electrons. And as you know that electrons are negatively charged, so those electrons would rather have as much distance as possible from one another. So you have to keep in mind that Covalent bonds are actually areas of very high electron density. And electrons would always prefer to stay as far as possible. And that's one important factor that determines the shape of every molecule. If you're using my textbook, The Complete Notes for Edexcel AS Chemistry, we're on page 23 today. We're doing chapter 11. And as you can see, you have in my notes here, you have all of the information you need to understand this topic. As you can see, the points are put in a short form in a way that makes it very easy for you to remember. These points are taken from the mark schemes. So I've gathered all of the information from mark schemes and I've written the key points in this topic and every other topic. This makes it very easy for you to understand and it makes a very reliable way to learn the information because all the information you have here in front of you are exactly the same way examiners write their answers. In addition, I've made this color coding system makes it very easy for you to remember the key points, the definitions, and you also have diagrams that makes it very easy for you to understand those facts that require visual learning. In order to understand molecular shape, there are new terms you need to learn here about. The first one is what we call bonding pairs of electrons. Bonding pairs of electrons are the ones involved in a covalent bond. So bonding pairs are the ones you have between the nitrogen and hydrogen, for instance. Being negative, that means that they will always exert repulsion with another bonding pair of electrons. So the shape of the molecule is highly influenced by these bonding pairs of it. In addition to the bonding pairs, we have what we call the unshared electrons. We also call them the lone electrons or the lone pairs of electrons. For instance, here the nitrogen has three bonding pairs of electrons. So it has three electrons involved in a covalent bond. In addition to a pair of electrons shown here. This pair of electrons is what we call the unshared. Those unshared electrons are highly involved in the shape of a molecule because they exert a higher degree of repulsion than the bonding pairs because they're quite more distant from the center of the nitrogen atom. So the shape of a molecule is determined by both the bonding pairs and the lone pairs of electrons. The last new term that we have here is what we call the bond angle. Now a bond angle is that angle between two adjacent covalent bond. And the bond angle is influenced by both the bonding pairs and the lone pairs of electrons. In order to be able to draw and determine the shape of different molecules, you have to remember what are these atoms that contain lone or unshared electrons. So I have taken this chunk of the periodic table because this is the part that contains the nonmetals, and nonmetals are the atoms involved in covalent bonding. So let's start with group four. I'll first write the group number. So group number is going to be obviously four. The number of valence electrons is going to be exactly the same. 
the number of shared electrons is going to be four electrons as well. And the number of unshared electrons to determine the number of unshared electrons or the lone electrons here, you just subtract the valence electrons from the shared electrons and it's going to be zero. You could do the same thing for group five. So you write the group number, you write the number of valence electrons, and you determine the number of shared electrons. How we determine the number of shared electrons, you just remember that eight is the octet or the maximum number of electrons for each atom. So eight minus five is gonna be three. And that tells you what? That tells you that nitrogen has to share three electrons to make three covalent bonds. How will you work out the number of unshared electrons for nitrogen? It's going to be five minus three and it's going to be two. You could do the same thing for group six. So it's going to be uh, six for the group number, six for the valence. The shared electron is going to be eight minus six, two. And six minus two is gonna be four. So every time an oxygen makes a covalent bond, it's gonna to have to have four unshared electrons. And that will simply apply even to group seven. So we can come up with a conclusion here is that only group five, six, and seven are the atoms that have lone electrons. So you have to keep in mind every time you draw like a molecule containing oxygen, you have to put the shared electrons. Oxygen will always, always have to share two electrons and it will always have to have four unshared electrons. I can even apply this to pH3. So phosphorus is a member of group five so it has to have three shared electrons with these hydrogen but it should also have one pair of lone electrons because it has to have this one pair of unshared electrons in every single molecule let's apply what we've learned about the lone electrons on these multiple choice questions these questions are found in my classified questions for unit one what i've done in these books is that i've gathered all questions from the exam papers related to the topic and i put them all together what i've also done is that i've answered the question so i've answer these multiple choice questions and I also give explanation for every single answer. This makes it very easy for you to understand the answer, not only find the right answer. So let's try to solve this question. You can pose your screen and try to determine what's the right answer. So it says, which of the following molecule has the greatest number of lone electrons? So remember the rules that we've just made a couple of moments ago. We said that if you have an oxygen, then this oxygen will always have four unshared electrons. So I'm just going to put those unshared electrons here for oxygen. This makes this molecule have four unshared. The chlorine will have six unshared, as is shown here in our table. Nitrogen has just one pair of unshared electron, and oxygen again has four unshared electrons. So based on this, you can understand that the Answer B must be the right answer because chlorine here has six unshared electrons. Now that we have the basic knowledge, we can work on determining the shape of different molecules. So the molecule I have here is a linear molecule simply because it has a 180 degrees or it looks like a line. So this would be something like carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has a linear shape because carbon in the center has no unshared electron. Remember, group four has zero unshared electron. So it would make two covalent bonds with each oxygen. The oxygen do have lone electrons. So each oxygen on the side has four unshared electrons. But what really matters for the shape of the molecule is the central atom. So the central atom is the one that determines largely the shape of the molecule. In my case, the central atom is carbon, and the only electrons involved in this shape or the shape of this molecule are those bonding pairs. And those bonding pairs are trying to stay as far as possible. And the furthest they could get here is 180 degrees from one another. Another example is methane. So methane contains carbon in the center and has four hydrogens around the central atom. As I told you, what really determined the shape of the molecule is that central atom. So 
As you remember, carbon has no unshared electrons. The only electrons involved here are those bonding pairs of electrons. So we have those eight bonding pairs of electrons. And they're trying to stay as far as possible from one another. And the furthest apart these bonds can get is by having this tetrahedral shape, where we have like 109 degrees between each bonding pairs of electrons. What about molecules that contain lone electrons on that central atom? So let's take water. Water contains an oxygen and two hydrogens. Now oxygen makes two electrons. There are two electrons involved in covalent bonds, but there are four electrons that are unshared. Those unshared electrons, they influence the shape of the water molecule because although those bonding pairs are repelling each other but the lone electrons on top of the oxygen they exert a higher degree of repulsion so that reduces the angle from 180 degrees the one we had in a linear molecule to just 104 degrees the one we have here in water the reason is because those lone electrons they re exert a higher degree of repulsion than the bonding pairs of electrons we can rank the degree of repulsion between electrons into this figure. So as you can see, the bonding pairs have the least degree of repulsion. A bonding pair and a lone pair have a higher degree of repulsion. But if you have two lone pairs of electrons, that will exert the highest degree of repulsion. This is the case that we had in water. And that's the reason why water molecule has a, such a small angle of just 104 degrees between the bonding pairs of electrons. I'm going to leave a link in the description for this website. This website shows us the shape of all molecules that we have here in the syllabus. So as you can see here, I have a water molecule. And in this water molecule, you can see those lone electrons. See them here. Those are the lone electrons. And those lone electrons are exerting repulsion with the bonding electrons that we have here in water. So that's the reason why we have that such a small angle between the bonding pairs of electrons in water. So that's the angle I'm talking here about, which is just 104 degrees. We could try another molecule in three dimensions. What I have here is ammonia, NH3. Now remember, the nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons. This lone pair of electrons will exert repulsion with the bonding pairs of electrons. So the bonding pairs of electrons, as you can see here in white, and the lone pair of electron is shown here on top of the nitrogen. So the lone pair of electron is pushing away those bonding pairs and reducing the angle between every bond or every covalent bond we have in ammonia, reducing it to just 107 degrees. In conclusion, the bonding pairs of electrons have a weaker degree of repulsion and we have a higher degree of repulsion between lone pairs of electrons. And that's what really determines the shape of different molecules. This is why the angle in methane is larger than the angle we have here in ammonia. And it's even larger than the smaller angle we have in water. That's because in water we have four unshared electrons. In ammonia we have just one pair of electrons and in methane we have zero lone or unshared electrons. Let's take a look at examples of different molecular shapes that we have in the syllabus. So carbon dioxide is a good example of linear molecule. In every linear molecule, you have to have a total of three atoms, a central atom and two atoms around the center, where the central atom has no unshared electrons. As we said, carbon dioxide is a very good example, but we do have another example. The other example that we have to learn here about is beryllium dichloride. Beryllium is a member of group two. Beryllium has two valence electrons involved in the covalent bonds, two covalent bonds we have here. Beryllium has no unshared or no lone electron at the center. This is why beryllium has this linear shape or beryllium dichloride has 180 degrees and a linear shape. Beryllium and boron are exceptions to the general rule because beryllium and boron, they are both 
considered to be metals. They belong to group two and three. And these groups are groups of metals. However, both elements do get involved in covalent bonds. Another molecular shape is the one we have in water, where we have a central atom with lone electrons and two atoms around the center. So again, we have a total of three atoms. However, unlike the linear shaped molecule, the central atom in these bent or V-shaped molecules, the central atom must have lone electron. As we said, a good example of this is water H2O, but we do have other examples. For instance, the molecule of sulfur dioxide does also have a bent or V-shaped molecule because sulfur belongs to the same group of oxygen. It's group six. It does have lone electrons. And due to the fact that we have a total of three atoms in sulfur dioxide and lone electrons in the central atom, this is why the shape of sulfur dioxide is V-shaped and the angle is nearly 104 degrees. Another type of molecules are those that have triagonal planar shape. Very good example here is boron trifluoride. As we've stated earlier, boron and beryllium are members of group 2 and 3 respectively. Boron and beryllium do not have any unshared electrons, so they have zero unshared electrons. Due to the fact that we have a central atom here with no unshared electron and three atoms around the center, so I have like a total of four atoms here, the shape of the molecule is going to be triagonal planar. All molecules that are triagonal planar have a central atom like boron, for instance, without any unshared electrons. And you have three atoms around the center. And the angle in these molecules is 120 degrees. For molecules like ammonia, where you have four atoms in total where you have a central atom like nitrogen with unshared elect. The shape is not going to be triagonal planar because, as we said, the central atom here does have unshared electrons. So the overall shape is going to be pyramidal or triagonal pyramidal. In these molecules, the triagonal pyramidal, you always, always have a central atom with unshared electrons like nitrogen, phosphorus, and you have three atoms around. And the angle is going to be 107 degrees. As you can see here, the lone electrons around the center have reduced the angle from 120 degrees in triagonal planar to 107 degrees in triagonal pyramidal. Another molecular shape is tetrahedral. In every tetrahedral molecule, like CH4 or silicon tetrahydride, these molecules do always have 109 degrees. And you have a central atom like carbon, silicon, basically members of group four. Those atoms do not have any unshared electrons and they have four atoms around the center. These atoms could be hydrogen, chlorine, fluorine, it doesn't really matter. What really matters is the atom in the central molecule. So again, for tetrahedral molecules, you have a total of five atoms where the central atom has no unshared electrons. Another molecular shape is the triagonal bipyramidal. In this case, you have a central atom like phosphorus, for instance, without any lone electrons, and you have five atoms around the center. So you have like atoms with single bonds, like hydrogen, for instance, around that phosphorus, and each angle in this shape is 90 degrees. So you have all of the angles here, right angles, and you have to think of it as if it's like a pyramid pointing up, and a pyramid pointing down, and that's why we call it bipyramidal. So once again, this is a very rare shape of molecule, and we have very few examples of it. Again, one example is going to be PF5, for instance. In this case, the phosphorus here shown in orange is the one in the middle, and you have five fluorine around that center. And as I said, every angle is going to be 90 degrees. The last molecular shape is the octahedral molecule. This is a very rare molecule and we have one example only of this. We call it SF6. So you have sulfur in the center and you have six fluorine around that center and 
every angle in this molecule is 90 degrees. But you can still consider this angle between the top fluorine and the bottom fluorine. You can consider this as 180 degrees. So again, octahedral molecules are quite rare. And you have to remember that single example of SF6. So the sulfur here is shown in the center in yellow color. And the fluorine are shown around the center. We're going to solve this written question taken from my classified questions for unit one. So this question is found on page 45. We're going to solve it together. So first thing it says for BF3, name the shape of the molecule and give the bond angle between boron and fluorine. So first thing I'll do here, I'm going to sketch the shape of the molecule. I'm going to put boron in the middle. And I'm going to put three fluorine around that center. Remember, boron doesn't have any unshared electrons. For that reason, the shape is going to be trigonal planar. So I'm just going to write trigonal planar here for the shape. And the angle is going to be 120 degrees. I'm going to write it here. Now, they want us to do another molecule. They said for the NF3 molecule, draw the shape you would expect, suggest the bond angle around the NF bonds. So let's draw the shape. So I'm gonna draw that in three dimensions to score those four marks. I'm gonna really have to draw it neatly here. So this is the nitrogen in the center. I'm gonna put one fluorine on the same plane of nitrogen. I'm going to draw a dotted line to indicate that fluorine is inside the page or inside your screen in our case. The third fluorine would be pointing to the outside. So I'm draw that shape here. The pointed line indicates that the third fluorine is to the outside of your screen. I shouldn't forget that there is lone pair of electrons around or on top of that nitrogen. The bond angle is going to be 107. So that's the case for all those pyramidal shaped molecules, 107 degrees. Then I'm going to have to write a good explanation. So what's the explanation here? We're going to state that first that there is minimum repulsion between those bonding pairs of electrons and the lone pairs of electrons. So those bonding pairs are trying their best to stay as distant as possible from each other and from the lone pairs of electrons. The reason here is that we are trying to provide the minimum repulsion and the maximum separation. I'm going to leave a link in the description to my website. You can find there a complete course for AS chemistry where you get the notes exam questions and these exam questions are also solved for you so you'll get videos to cover every single lesson in the syllabus the exam questions plus the answer to those exam questions plus you can always get help and assistance so whenever you have trouble with any exam question or any problem in the syllabus you can always send me a message on whatsapp or email and i will help you out with